Hi Team Star, welcome back to another episode of Matt Talk with Star. This is Coach Alyssa here. I have been so excited to finally have a Star ATL member here on the podcast. So this episode is with Coach Amanda. Hi Amanda, how are you? Good, I'm doing well. Very excited to be here. Amanda is like I said, one of our coaches at Star ATL, but she also wears many hats. So Amanda, can you give us a little introduction about what you're involved in at Star? Absolutely. So I am the program director at Star ATL. I coach three elite teams. I also lay coach Archer High School. I am the head coach of Archer Middle. And then I'm also the director of the FIRE program for um, Star. Yeah, we have been loving a lot of the FIRE program that you have been working on with Stephanie. We started our Facebook group and have that up and running, and it's been really awesome, and there already has been a lot of progress with our Flyers. I actually, um, when Steph came down here, we actually spent like hours in the gym when the girls were here. It was so much fun. We, Steph and I were able to bond more. Um, she was able to show me her drills. I was able to show her my drills. We put them together and we were able to make that awesome document for all the girls. Yeah, it's awesome and it's so easily laid out. We've gotten, I, it's really cool to see like all the flyers. I think it's a really like, it's a cool, um, cool way to like unite both locations, I think. I also think flyers that it pushes everywhere. the flyers too because you see, um, you see Star ATL doing it, and then you see Star New Jersey doing it, and they just want to become better, and it will help them too. Absolutely. Our first segment that we have is our leadership symbols. So we've had a bit of a variety depending on our guests. So Amanda, what do you think your leadership symbol is? My leadership symbol would be the megaphone. I'm very vocal, always counting, and not scared to speak up when needed. Um, I would I would absolutely say that the megaphone really represents who I am. Yeah, I would say the megaphone is probably the hardest leadership symbol. I also talked about that with Lauren. I think because it requires the most experience and just I guess confidence in knowing what you're doing. So you how, do you think you've been a megaphone throughout your entire cheer career, or something that you have built up to? I think I built up to it. Um, I like to listen. I like to learn. And when I'm able to listen to somebody really like talk about what they are good at, I really feel that I build, like I gain that knowledge. And when I gain that knowledge, I'm able to vote, like voice it to everybody else. And I feel strong about it. Yeah, 100%. Okay. So Our next little segment is our quote. So we have a quote that was actually picked by Coach Lauren to that she felt really best fit Amanda. And the quote is, if you want something bad enough, find a way, not an excuse. I I absolutely agree with Lauren with that. I'm a really, um, my personality is like a go-getter. I like to really focus on if I want something bad enough, I really, I try my hardest to make sure that I succeed. I don't like to give up. I actually, I never give up. I will keep pushing and pushing and pushing until I really get what I want. So I feel that Lauren was 100% right on that quote. All right. So since it is our first episode with a member of Star ATL, these questions are a little bit about a coach Amanda, for those of you who don't know her, and then a little bit about what's been going on in Atlanta. So to start off, Coach Amanda, how did you get your start in all-star cheer? Um, when I was about eight years old, I actually did dance and contortion at a gymnastics place in New Jersey. Um, I did that for about five years, and the owner of the gym actually wanted to do a cheerleading team. So then I started doing a cheerleading team through them. So I did that for probably, I did dance contortion, I did ballet, I did point, and I had, um, I was doing the cheerleading um, program too. So I did like five different things and I had like a class schedule like you would go to school. And it was like a class schedule just like that. 
from like four o'clock when I was there till nine o'clock, different classes going throughout the entire day. And I competed in all of them. And I did that for probably about uh, 10 years. And then I went to college. Wow. So you lived in New Jersey, right? Yep. I did live in New Jersey. I lived in New Jersey, uh, born and raised. I lived in Cape May, New Jersey. Wow. And I was like right outside of New Jersey. So I lived there until I was 18. And then I went to college in Delaware for until I was 22. And then I moved to Georgia. Wow. So Star NJ was kind of like a full circle thing. Yeah, it really was. And it's actually um, an ongoing joke because when you walk into the gym, there's like a Georgia logo and then a New Jersey logo. And David, as everyone knows, he's my husband and he was born and raised in Georgia. And then I was born and raised in New Jersey. So it's kind of like meant to be. Oh my God, that's so funny. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So you can do for dance or for cheer. What was your favorite memory as an athlete? I would say my favorite memory as an athlete is when I graduated high school and I received a scholarship for college at Wilmington University in Delaware. And I was on their first team that received the national championship title in Division II small co-ed. And I actually won two more years after that. So I have a, I won college national three times in a row. Wow. And then oh, two of cool. those times were with David. So you guys met in college? Yes, we did. Aww. That's so cool. <laughs> I, didn't re- I, I really did not know any of this. So I'm like learning along with everyone else. Yeah, it was, um, it was actually, what's really funny is that my first year that I won college nationals, I competed against David's sisters on a team and we did not know. And my team actually ended up beating them. And then we met the next year and we're like, oh my God, you were on that team. And then we actually ended up being best friends and everything after that. And it was pretty funny that with, at how small the world is with cheerleading and we connected like that. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of our listeners, um, idea of college nationals is skewed to the Netflix <laughs> yes. um, perspective <laughs> with cheer. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it similar or? Um, that was an NCA team. So UCA yeah. is completely different from NCA. Completely different. Yes. Okay. So, I would say um, it has it has similarities, but not all of it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Just making, making everyone on the same page here. Yeah. So when did you start coaching? I started coaching when I was 16 years old at that gym that I was telling you about. It's actually called Our Gymnastics and Cheer, and they're actually still in New Jersey. They have a cheerleading program. They also do contortion and dance and all that. So it's kind of awesome that it's still running and it's still going strong. Awesome. So as a coach or even just in your everyday life, who do you look for for inspiration? Okay. So, um, I would say that I have two. Um, one is, I would say is David. David is an amazing coach. Um, he's very good at stunt technique. He's very good at grips He's also very good at tumbling. Um, And it's just like, I personally feel like I grow more and more every time I step into the gym, just listening. If I was just sitting on the side, just listening of him just coaching an athlete. Like every athlete um, learns differently. So he has to teach differently. So just listening, I feel like I gain more knowledge and I just feel like I become better and I want to become better listening to him and then I will also say um my other inspiration would be Lee um he is someone that just like out in his podcast he was saying that his leadership symbol is the Nike check and I would 100% agree with him um he is excellent he is he has the eye his eye for tumbling is excellent um, the way he talks to parents and athletes is excellent. And just even just talking to him and just having text messages and emailing him back and forth, it just makes me want to become that much better as a leader. And I feel that he is very inspirational in that point of view. Yeah. 
Uh, this kind of goes into our next question, but a little off script. How often would you say you are in communication with Lee? I would say I talk to Lee every day. Um, okay. Even if it's just something silly, like when he was down here, he he met every single athlete in the gym. He's so good with names. Like he's like I don't understand how he, he is. He can so remember kids, and, parents, yes, everybody, and like. Every time I text him, I'm like, oh, so-and-so did this. And he's, like, so excited for them because I love that he had that chance to be down here for a month to get to know everybody so we can actually talk about everything and he can reference back to it and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And that's what I love. So we'll talk about we'll talk about the gym, but then we'll talk about other things. And, like, it's just it's great. I would say that we stay in communication every day. Even if it's just something small or big, something cheer related, something not cheer related. Um, he loves my little dog Tucker. He talks about him all the time. I send him pictures all the time of him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually it's um I would say that Lee and I have grown a great relationship. That's awesome. It's I think it it'll it really will show, I mm-hmm. I think. I think so too. And I actually have one more off off script question oh, no, fine. do you coach any teams with your husband i do okay. i do coach a team um crush junior four medium we have 30 athletes on that team in previous years i we've coached with each other for the last four years so this will be our fifth year okay. coaching together and you like coaching with him i love it i feel like we every year we'll do one team and then together and then we'll have our other teams that we coach it's just like it's a great bond like you know everyone has that coach that they love to coach with because you know your coaching styles like everyone all of our kids will say i'm the mean cop and then (laughs) he's he's the nice (laughs) cop yes and everything like that like it's just it's an ongoing joke like i'll go on and like a lot of people, a lot of the girls, um, one of the girls, Logan, they like to call me the Chihuahua because I just go in, I like just yell, 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 and yell. <laughs> and then sometimes they're just like, they know when I'm serious, when I'm like joking around. So it's, it's a great relationship. And um, awesome. the kids love it too. And it's great. Awesome. Thank you. I was just curious. <laughs> You're fine. Okay. So what it does a typical day in the life of Amanda look like now? Um, I would say I wake up and it started to yell and then I go to sleep and it started to yell (laughs) and I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, So I get to the gym around 12 o'clock every day. I do admin stuff. I talk to Candace. I talk to Kiana. I talk to Lee. I do admin. I answer emails consistently, um, scheduling, doing all that stuff from 12 to 4. And then I'm on the floor at the gym from 4 to 9 every day. Wow. Between classes and teams? Um, so um, I actually do a leg coach. At high school, right? Yep, at high school. So okay. typically, so that was like, so I would say Wednesdays, I'm there from 4. I'm there at 12 to nine but on Mondays Tuesdays and Thursdays I go to my high school from two to four and then I go straight to the gym afterwards so it's a it's a lot so high school normally runs from um June all the way through November and then that's when high or all stars really kick up and go going so it's a really good break which we like because it's like you have your um high school really like full speed and then you have all stars full speed so i very busy schedule and i wouldn't want it any other way because it's just it keeps me going it keeps me like it just keeps me alive it's just so much fun awesome thank you for sharing yeah so so far i know we are about two three months in what has been your favorite thing about star atl my favorite thing about star atl would be seeing all the girls being excited about the tumbling deck that was built i the have tumbling to, deck yes and i know like <laughs> a lot of people think that it's like oh it's just a tumbling deck but like this tumbling deck is absolutely amazing I have never coached on it before. The kids have never tumbled on it before. It's so convenient. Um, I like the favorite thing about Star TL inside that gym is that tumbling deck. Like we can have, so 
we have two teams going at once, and then we have tumbling classes consistently going. And the girls, because typically um, what would happen is tumbling classes go behind teams and stuff like that, but that tumbling deck allows them to actually use the whole space, and then they have the rod floor going into the pit, they have a spring floor going into the pit, they have the um, tumble track going into the pit. And the way the girls are progressing they're progressing so much faster using this deck. And it just makes me happy to see them progress progress a lot faster because of just a simple deck can make it so much easier for them. And when I say simple, it's really not that simple. If you saw how the dads built it, <laughs> they were yes. in there nonstop from the time they got there until probably – They probably got there around 4 o'clock every day for a good week and then left at, like, 12 o'clock at night. Like, they put their heart into that, and they listened exactly what Lee wanted. It's just like the one in New Jersey. And um, Dave and I actually went to New Jersey and saw the gym, and we saw the tumbling deck. Yeah, that's a star secret. Yeah, and we saw the tumbling deck, and we're like, oh, my God, we want one of these. And Lee's like, I'm already designing it. And we're like, really? So we got so excited about that. You guys came up to get a floor, right? Yes, so we did. Um, So we did go there. We got a floor. Um, We drove down there. And that was the first time you ever been to Star. I didn't interrupt Yes. That was the first time you ever been to Star in New Jersey, right? Yep. So it was the first time we drove down. Well, actually, we drove up. So we drove up, (laughs) and we took David's truck, and then um, we put stuff in David's truck, and then we also rented a U-Haul. And when we rented the U-Haul... Um, David drove that home and I drove the truck home and this is actually a really funny story he always tells me I'm not allowed to text or like take pictures while I'm driving his truck because like that's his baby like you can't ruin his truck (laughs) and I'm a terrible (laughs) driver to be honest (laughs) so (laughs) so um we were driving and I was like oh my god this scenery is so pretty so I had to take a picture of the scenery and the truck and I was like, I put it in the group message. I was like, don't tell David that I'm taking this picture. And I just had to share it with, like, Lee and Lauren. So it was just driving there and getting that truck was just, and getting that floor was the start of ATL, and that just meant so much. Yeah. And the inside of ATL is laid out a little differently, but it has the same features as Star New Jersey, right? Yes. So we have the bathroom that connects to the gym, which is really awesome. We have the tumble deck. We have the beautiful banners behind, which um, we're like, it makes the whole gym. The banners are so pretty. Um, Then we have the office with the windows, like when you walk in, just like um, New Jersey. And then um, it's just, then we have the staff bathroom, we have a parent bathroom, and then we also have the kids' room where they put all their stuff, and we have cubbies everywhere. Yeah, and the cubbies underneath the tumble deck is really clutch. <laughs> it's key, yes, yes, because you know how many times someone knocks over someone's water bottle. It's yes. Just very well thought out. Yes, it really That's is. so cool. Lee actually I'm had the, to go down. <laughs> yes, Lee actually had the chance to design everything like the um build out so it's just everything was very organized and well thought out and Mm -hmm. it's like it's everything that was built in we use every single day yeah it's exciting to hear because there's probably stuff here that these kids don't even take for granted like they don't even think twice about the tumble deck but that's why i just thought it was just so funny that you pointed out the tumble deck it's something that I always, I've been a part of Star Athletics for seven years. I don't know a Star Athletics without a tumble deck, you know? Yeah. It's just very cool. It's very different. Yeah. And it's like, that's what's the best part of it. It's so different and it's so useful. You would not even think how useful it is until like you actually see the kids grow and like with just having it and like it just really got completed the last week or two and because we always had the one side without the pits and then we finally got the pits and then the spring floor and it's just like for the last two days like you can see these kids so happy because they're getting their skills on the floor and half of them don't even realize that that's the spring floor going into they think it's another rod floor and then when we tell them like y'all just did that on the spring floor they just you can just see the happiness in their eyes yeah that's so exciting so moving back a, a couple months, can you give us an insider view of Star ATL's first team reveal? Wow. Well, the first team reveal it was 
absolutely amazing. Like we've never experienced anything like the reveal. And obviously it was done differently because of everything that's going on, but we made the best of it. Like um, just even leading up to the reveal, like Steph, me, Kiana doing the cards and that's stuff that I love to do. I love being organized. I love writing things out. I love just looking at everything and it actually it helped me know everyone's name it got to me know everyone's name everyone's parents how to name, spell it how to spell it like it just it like just doing writing the cards it just that right there was just a huge thing in itself and then um with just the day how it worked how it ran how we all worked together as a staff to make it the way it was and how it happened was just incredible. The kids' faces, they had no idea Steph was behind them with the confetti gun and blowing it up. And just also, I I know probably, I don't even think I even told Steph this, but like we went down the line and we, every coach explained like exactly who they are, what they're coaching in each session, in each session. And Steph was last and she just like described how she was a part of star for 20 years and the kids expressions, the parents expressions of just knowing somebody that was in part of this program for so long that loves it so much and hasn't left and is so invested in the program. The brand was just very happy to see that the kids were so excited to see how Steph was engaged and loved the program that much. That's awesome. She tunes in. She is a loyal podcast listener, so <laughs> she will definitely hear this. And that is so sweet and so awesome. And something, yeah, that we think about and probably take for granted even. We have kids in the program that have cheered here for 10 years. And I was making a joke with Stephanie when we were stuffing the envelopes. Like, ACLs was probably so fast. Like, everyone just got a first-year card, and we're, like, scrambling all over third year, fifth year. But uh-huh. it's really cool. It really was. It was really, really cool. And I'm so happy that we were able to do it, even with everything happening and the way it was done. It was just, uh, we loved it. And we can't wait till next year where we hopefully can do it with everybody in there. And like, it's just, it's something different. Like we looked forward to this and then next year we're looking forward to something different. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's like Starry Tale opened up and everything's, everything's different because of COVID and everything, but we're making the best of it. And that's, that's what's really important. Yes, absolutely. So like we said, we're kind of in uncharted territory here, but what are you most looking forward to for this season? I would say cheer sport in hopes that New Jersey can come to cheer sport too and how Georgia will be at cheer sport and we can bond. The crowd is going to be insane. Um, Our kids are gonna be able to finally meet each other because I know they're on Instagram with the um, Star Buddy page and stuff like that, how they're already connecting. And now they can actually see face to face and just, it just gives me chills just thinking about cheer sport and I cannot wait till we can all connect even with the staff. Like I'm so excited yes. to meet y'all in person and not over just zoom. And I feel like it's just going to be like, even though that we do just talk and over zoom and stuff like that, I just feel like we're already a family as is and we're already getting to know each other. And it's just going to be like one happy reunion once we can finally get the cheer sport together. Yes. It's going to be, hopefully like insane yes the pictures and just the reunions and just everyone meeting everyone yeah it's just... I think it's I think it's top of mind for a lot of people I know I we've been gathering questions and stuff on Instagram mm-hmm. and everyone is always asking when is NJ and Georgia gonna get together like so I I know it's very top of mind to a lot of people <laughs> yeah it's it's like um we were just I feel like we it's like it comes up a topic once a week about cheer sport in the gym we're just like we cannot wait to see new jersey we cannot wait to be together it's just it's it's very exciting awesome now what is something you enjoy teaching the most either a level or a skill um so the level that i enjoy teaching the most is level one Um, yes amanda (laughs) that's the right answer (laughs) 
<laughs> level one is my favorite because you get these athletes that have no idea what cheerleading is have no idea when you say get to the center panel they don't know what that means like they you have to teach them what a line is you have to teach them what a space is you have to teach them how to count to eight and it's just it's it's rev- like I just love it it's just like I love looking at this athlete and just they're like I don't know what to do and I said great because I do and I can help you <laughs> and it's just like just the technique in level one just focusing on straight legs and back walkovers and I'm like this is important for level two this is important for level four even like level one is where every athlete starts and I honestly feel that every athlete needs to have that strong level one to be able to be that successful athlete that they really want to be um and it's crazy how much level one has grown I feel I since the beginning of the summit I think Yes, I agree. And how much, how challenging it is now, mm-hmm. all the rules and the grips and the spotters. Uh-huh, the spotter grip. <laughs> yes. It's one of the hardest levels. Lauren always is like, I could never do it. I don't know, wouldn't know what to do. It's just, you have to be creative. It's just like, who can be very creative in this level? Who can teach the best technique? Who, it's just, everything about level one is just exciting for me. It's just, you walk into practice and be like, okay, I'm okay with not stunning today. Let's work on straight legs and back walkovers. Let's work on body positions. Let's work on body lines. Let's work on our splits. Let's get our splits down to make our back walkovers better. It's just level one. People think, oh, it's level one. Like, that's not exciting. I'm like, it's so exciting to me. I get so excited when I walk into knockouts practice because I coach knockout. I coach junior one with Katie and... Um, we just love coaching it. Like the kids are just so coachable. They want to learn. They want to, they're like, what's next? What are, what are we learning today? And it's just, they're just so happy to be there. So I truly believe level one is my favorite level to coach. And I would say that I love coaching stunning. Stunning is a fun thing to coach for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We've been working on our stunts star and jay had our first week of outdoor stunting with masks so we are there kind of and excited about it and just trying to be as safe and as compliant as we can be to move forward i guess i love seeing you guys have been stunting for a while right yes um we've been stunting for about a month um, okay. I love seeing y'all's um, pictures and videos and how excited <laughs> the kids are to stunt. And I feel like the coaches are might be a little bit more excited than the kids at this point to stunt. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're like, yeah, we did sponges today. It was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, yes, while we are here talking about stunting, can you tell us a little bit about Star ATL's flyer program or maybe a little bit of advice for some new flyers or anything of that nature? I would say, so um, I love coaching body lines, stretching. I actually had a stretch class today. Um, They're my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing to coach besides stunting. Um, It's just every flyer needs to have that drive. They need to want it more than the coach wants it for them like we can tell them what to do we can tell them how to make it better but we can't make them do it if they don't want to do it and i honestly feel that this flyer page that we have right now is making both georgia and new jersey want to be a better flyer because they see they actually like they can go on and look at their posts from three weeks ago they can look at three weeks ago and then they it can be in um february and they can look back on that three week like in august they say they can say look in august and they can compare it to um january and see the comparison of how much better they improved and it's just when flyers are stretching consistently they get really excited when they're able to compare their pictures and compare like, oh my God, I got this much better. Even if it's just something about locking your leg out or turning your foot straight, it's just there's so much room to improve and flexibility if they want to improve. 
And I feel like when Steph and I did the videos, they're able to put that on their TV on Apple TV and do their stretches at home, especially during when we have to quarantine. I feel like this is a great time for them to really focus on that. And by just to be super clear, stretching consistently means what? So it's not all about going and pulling a needle. It's like flyers can't just go up and pull a needle because that's really not stretching. You're going to actually pull something if you do that. Like they need to warm their bodies up. They need to do a light stretch. And I'm not saying they have to do a hard stretch every single day. They have to do a, I, what I tell a lot of my kids is, alternate do a light stretch one day and then do a hard stretch the next day because then you're going to overstrain your body for sure um but just going in and pulling body positions focusing on your body lines um getting into splits and just holding them um doing bridges doing all like conditioning and just more or less it's when you have a flyer that has bad technique they've done it so many times with bad technique that's it's hard to break so they get hard on their self saying I don't see any improvement but us as coaches we notice the little things of your leg is straight your hip is not out and we have to remind them that it's not tumbling where you're going to learn a back walk over in two weeks it's your it takes a month it might take two months three months four months for you to actually feel that you aren't improving that much So I truly believe that flying, like a lot of, everyone wants to be a flyer. They always want to. Yes, they do. Everyone (laughs) wants to be a flyer. Every parent wants their athlete to be a flyer, but they don't realize how much work they have to put in to make their self be that best of a flyer, to be honest. I think that was very, very awesome advice, Amanda. And I think the comparison to tumbling is perfect in the sense that you know like you said you can get you know a back walk over in a couple classes but that stretching really is takes a long time it does and a lot of a lot of athletes get hard on themselves because they're like Amanda why why am I not seeing improvement why is my needle not straight and I'm like well have you been stretching every day no I only stretch like two times this week I said okay well you have to be consistent you have to have that drive. You have to you have to want it because like I said, it's it's not easy. It's hard. It hurts. So a lot mm-hmm. of kids want to stop. Like they like sitting in a split's not going to stretch you. Like if you already have a split, you need to do an over split. You have to take it to the next level. And that's the only way you're going to grow is if you take it to the next level. Sometimes you just have to feel uncomfortable because you're just like, Oh, I'm in a lot of pain, but I have to push through it if I want to become that much better. Awesome. Thank you. That was very helpful flyer tips. So hopefully our flyers, flyer parents, whoever is tuning in, took some notes down Mm because that was awesome advice. Now we are kind of wrapping up here. How would you describe Star ATL in one word? Kind of of a tough question. I would say home. It's home. I would say that Star ATL is my home is our staff's home I would say our athletes feel like they are at home like it's just comfortable they walk in they're just like this is so homey like I just feel like we're a big giant family so I feel like honestly star ATL in one word is home it's it's our happy place that's amazing and I I don't know that's just I love everything about that. That is just so awesome. And it has been so exciting to watch it grow. And especially over the last couple months, physically and online and in numbers and in classes and in teams. It's been really, really amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing to experience. And we, this could not ever have happened without the staff without lee without steph without lauren without y'all like everyone had a part of star atl and it just it's great to have everyone it's great to know that everyone has our back through everything do you have any specific star shout outs to any of the staff members that you just named or any athletes that have stood out to you this week or this summer i would say um 
A huge shout out to our entire staff from admin Kiana and Candace, from Sam, Simone, Austin, Charles, Katie, Cameron, David, everybody that's on our staff. We have been in that gym from four, two o'clock because high schools are in there at two o'clock during the summer to nine o'clock in that heat working nonstop and not complaining. It's like we go in there, we know we have a job to get done and just to make it a positive atmosphere, it's the coaches are making it that much better for the kids. And we just got AC today, so that's super exciting. Yay. And um, I just the staff pushing through and just being wonderful and willing to do anything to make our athletes better and to make Star ATL on the map is just, I would say, the staff all deserves a huge shout out. Awesome. Go ATL staff. Thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us for this episode of Matt Talk with Star. This has been one that I think I've learned the most in. A lot of new stuff I've never, a lot of stories I've never heard or just a lot of new information for me. It was so exciting. I hope everyone listening along learned something new as well. Um, We have a new Shopify with our Star Apparel for both locations, so be sure to check out our Pro Shop sales. They've been adding stuff almost every day, as you probably can see in our social feeds, so make sure you check that out at www.starathleticsnjga.myshopify.com. Also, if you are a loyal listener, you know that our episodes drop every Sunday night at 8 p.m., and we will be sticking to that schedule for now, so be sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on an episode. In addition, of course, you should be following our Instagram and Twitter at star underscore team star and underscore team star ATL and our Facebook pages, Star Athletics New Jersey and Star Athletics Atlanta on Facebook. That is a wrap on our episode with Coach Amanda. Thank you again for joining us, and we will catch you next time. Bye.